Hello my YouTube friends. I've done a bunch of content that shows nested scenes. It's maybe the most important thing to understand if you want to put together complex and dynamic live streams. So I wanted to dig a little deeper into nested scenes today and show you how they work and why you should definitely be using them. So let's get to it. <laughs> My goal on this channel is to make people better live streamers and maybe entertain a little bit in the process. So please take a second and leave a comment down below and let me know how I'm doing. This really does help YouTube to share this content out with a wider audience. And if you aren't subscribed, please do. It really helps me to continue to make content that helps you and it's totally free, so thanks. There are a variety of reasons to use nested scenes. One is to avoid repetition. You can create complex assets and reuse them over and over again. Reason two is simplicity. It's so much easier to locate problems when you have a central location for each complex asset or group that you use. It also makes your sources much easier to manage. Nested scenes we're gonna be creating today are ones for soundboards, cameras, backdrops, and overlays. So let's start with the soundboard. Creating a nested soundboard scene is pretty easy. The first thing we're gonna do is just rename our scene. So we right click on it and go to rename. I'm gonna call it NS-soundboard. NS stands for nested scene, makes them easy to identify. And I'm gonna click the plus under sources and I'm gonna go to media source. I'm just gonna name this after the clip that it's going to play, in this case, I'm I'm ready and click OK. Now I'm just going to browse to the clip that I want to play for this particular one. Select it and click open. So you want to make sure you have restart playback when source becomes active. And that means it's going to start from the beginning every time that you activate it. So we're just going to click OK and we've added our first sound to the soundboard. And this one is really loud. So we're going to adjust it down. And these sounds are obviously for a soundboard. So they're not very long. We can go up here into the bar and we can play them and just make sure that the audio is set up properly and not too loud. And then all you do is click the eye to turn it on and off. So when you turn it on, when you click the eye, it's gonna play the sound. And when you click the eye again, it's going to stop playing the sound. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add a couple of more. So we're just gonna go into media source and name these up and go in and select them and adjust their volume and all that kind of stuff. Now, just so you know, the natural state of these should always be the little eyeball should be off. And that's because when you switch scenes, if the eyeball is not off, they will play every time you switch to the scene with your soundboard in it. You only want these to play when you turn them on. And so the natural state should be off. And once you have all this set up, we're gonna go into advanced audio properties and I'm just gonna turn them all on really quickly. And we can go over here into audio monitoring and we can set them up so that we can hear them. Now, if monitor off is set, that means the stream will hear it, but you won't. Monitor only is set up so that you can hear it, but it doesn't go out to the stream. And then the final one there is monitor and output. And that is what you would select if you wanna hear it and you also want it to go out to your stream. So so you can go in here and select whether you want to hear the clip, whether you want no one to hear the clip except for you, or whether you want to hear the clip and have your audience hear the clip. And you can do this individually for any of these that you have in the soundboard. And once you have this set up, once again, you want to go back out and turn them all off using the little eye icon. Let's look at nested scenes for cameras. To set up our camera, we're going to go ahead and click the plus here and we're going to create a new scene we're gonna call this one NS dash main camera for nested scene and then under sources I'm gonna click the plus and we're gonna go to video capture device I'm just gonna call this one camera so I know what it is and I'm gonna set up my camera in here this is pretty standard stuff I'll scroll down to the bottom and choose custom audio device and select my cam link so I have the proper microphone and that's all set up so I'm gonna right click on the camera in sources and go to filters and then I'm going to go ahead and select the mask blend and click OK and I'm gonna browse to my mask file that I created beforehand and you're gonna see this adds a really cool outline effect to our camera so we want to do a little more with this we're gonna click the plus and we're going to go to media source and I'm just gonna call this one back and I'm gonna click OK and I'm gonna browse and just find a video file that I want to use and then open that file and click OK and I'm gonna move this down below our camera right click on it go into filters and we're
we're going to add another mask blend to this. I'm gonna browse, and this one is a little bigger, so it gives us an outline. But of course, you can't see it because I forgot to loop the video, and it's very short. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click, go to properties, loop the video, click OK, and there we go. Now we have a really cool camera in our nested main camera scene. We can tackle backgrounds and overlays in one section. So let's do it. We'll start out by adding an overlay. So the first thing we're gonna do is go into our scenes and create a new one. We'll call this NS-Overlay. And why don't we just call this Main Overlay just in case we have more than one. We'll click OK. Then we're gonna go and click the plus. We'll go to Media Sources and we're going to add our Main Overlay and click OK. Now I'm gonna browse to the location of my overlay file. And I just wanna click Loop because it is a short clip and OK. And there we go, now our overlay is in here. Now what we can do is we can just add in all of the alerts that are going to be used with this overlay. So I'm going to click the plus and I'm going to go to browser source and I'm just going to call this one alerts and click OK and I'm going to paste the URL for the alert I'm going to use and I'm going to go ahead and set it up so it's 1920 by 1080 the size of my actual output and my screen and if I want to use audio I'm going to click that use the audio as well and I'm going to refresh the cache and click OK. And now you're going to see up in the top, our stream labels have populated with our last subscriber, super chat, and last donation. So now I'm going to create the background scene. I'm just going to click the plus under scene, and I'm going to type ns-background and click OK. And I'm going to click the plus, and I'm going to go ahead and just add a color source. This is not very used, but I absolutely love the effect. I'm gonna call it blue, and I'm just gonna go and select the color. Shockingly, it's going to be blue, and then I'm gonna click OK, and then I'm gonna click OK. And just for fun, I'm gonna shrink this up just a little bit. I'm gonna use the arrow keys to finely tune it and put it where I want it. And I just want a little bit of space around the edges here on this box. Then I'm gonna go ahead and click the plus, and I'm gonna add a media source, and then we'll just name this so we can remember what it is later. We'll call it back to, and I'm going to go ahead and browse to a file that I want to use. And this is just a short video clip that's going to add some animation to the edges. I'm going to select loop and click OK, and I'll move this down below my background. And there we go. Now we have a usable background scene with a little bit of animation. Awesome. Now we created all these nested scenes. Let's put together a live stream. Let's go ahead and build out our first scene. I'm going to click the plus under here and we're gonna use this main scene. I'm just gonna call it main and click OK. You can see it's black. I'll just click the plus under sources. And the first thing I'm gonna do is select scene and I'm gonna add our main overlay. And there we go. We can see our overlay is in there with the alerts. If I move it around, the alerts stay with it. That is the benefit of using a nested scene. You can build a complex scene and everything is gonna stay with it. If I go back into that nested scene, I can move around each of those individual elements. Now I'm gonna click the plus. I'm gonna go to scene once again and we're going to go ahead and add our main camera. And boom. There we go, we have our camera with our actual border and everything already set up. I can just select it, shrink it down, put it wherever I want, and you notice the background moves right along with the camera. It's totally connected. I'm just gonna size this up to the proper size. Now if I go into my main camera, you can see I can move these items individually. But of course, in our nested scene, when we go to main, we can move it around with the background connected and not have to worry about anything getting messed up. This is the beauty of a nested scene. So I'm just gonna move that below my overlay and that's pretty cool. We have that scene all set up. So I'm just gonna click plus and we're gonna call this one intermission and click OK. And then I'm gonna click the plus. We'll go ahead and add a scene once again. This time we're gonna add that background and we're gonna just shrink it up put it over here and there we go. And that background is really subtle. So if I click off of it, you can see the animation, but otherwise it's really subtle. Now I'm gonna add another scene. I'm gonna add my main camera and click okay. You can see there it is with our border and mask and everything already set up. We just resize it and place it where we want it. And we'll place this scene over here where we want it. Looking very good. Now I'm gonna click the plus and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add a media source into this scene because it's an intermission and we might wanna be playing a video in this box. So I'll just call it video. And I'm gonna browse to a video that I want to play in this little blue background box down here. And 
can go ahead and loop the video just in case and click OK. And then I'm just going to shrink it up and we're going to put it inside this little blue box. So that box will serve as a border for our animation. Now what we can do is move this down a little bit and adjust the size of our camera. And I think I'm gonna make this bigger. And so we'll just adjust the size of our box and then the size of our video. And we'll use the arrow keys to move it around just a little bit. And I think that looks better. We don't need our face cam any bigger than that really. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click the plus and I'm gonna go ahead and go to scenes. And I'm just gonna add that background in again to show you how versatile these can be. I'm gonna shrink this up, reset size it. I'm going to put it right here and then I'm going to hold down the alt key. I'm going to crop this edge in. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and click the plus. I'm going to add another scene. We're going to select the background once again and click OK. And then I'm just going to go ahead and hold the alt key and crop it again. We're going to put a little box up here on the top. And you can see it always has that animated background on it no matter what we do. We'll move this down a little bit so it's underneath the other video clip of my camera. And I'm going to crop it in just a little bit more. There we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and add some text source. So I'm going to go to the text tool and we'll name our text. I'm going to select the font I want to use click OK. We'll add some text in here. We'll call this intermission. We'll name our scene. And I'm going to go down here and we're going to select the colors on the text just a little bit. We'll add a little bit of a black outline to our text. Move it on over here. Shrink it up so it fits into our blue background box right here. And then down here in the bottom left, that other blue box is what I would use for chat. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy and then I'm going to paste the duplicate of the other text. I'm going to right click on it and go and rename it. We're going to call this one chat box. And then I'm going to right click on it once again and go to properties properties and I'm just going to go ahead and put our new text in there. Click OK and all I have to do now is move it down into our chat box and resize it. And now we can use one of the third party apps to add chat right into here and we have a really really epic and interesting looking intermission scene that if you looked at it just off the cuff you would think someone spent a lot of time and this literally took me five minutes using nested scenes and once you create the nested scene you can use it over and over and over again and it will always look great you can see switching back and forth between these scenes how seamless and smooth it is now the last piece is of course we created a soundboard and we haven't actually actually used it yet and all you have to do is go to scene select your soundboard scene and click OK and it adds your soundboard scene in there we'll go to the other one click the plus go to scene and add our soundboard scene so it's that easy once you set it up once now all of those sounds are available in each of these scenes <laughs> That's just too easy, right? If you wanna see how easy it is to control a soundboard on your live stream with hotkeys, check this video out. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks that can help make you a better live streamer or YouTuber, subscribe to the channel. It's totally free. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.